This is Stinger for CardRunners.com. Doing a 2 4 Pilot in Omaha video on Poker Stars. And unfortunately, I couldn't find enough good 6 max tables to do the video at. So, bear with me here. It's full ring. Could get a little boring. But, good news is, Pilot in Omaha, you can play more starting hands than in No Limit Hold'em. So, still not going to be sitting here fold, fold, fold. Not quite the same as full ring. I mean, certainly is a different game. Full ring, pot in Omaha from six handed. But it's a little more tolerable than full ring, no limit, which I'm not a big fan of. Haven't really played much in a while, except for on Poker Stars because they don't have any six max tables at 2550 level. So, I'm going to give you a little disclaimer here. This is my first Omaha video, and I've only been playing Parliament Omaha seriously for a couple months. So, I am liable to make mistakes. I, I don't play perfectly, but of late I've been doing pretty well in playing Omaha. And think I can help your games with some of the insight I've discovered lately. So now we're finally getting some cards. Queen Jack, Jack 6 with the suited Queen Jack. Certainly not a monster hand, but to a min raise or something, it might play it. Alright, now this is a better hand. King Queen 10 4, double suited. The 4 is a little bit of a downer, but the rest of the hand, and the fact that it's double suited definitely ups the value of it. The only other downside is that amount of position. So, while I will raise some hands from the blinds, they usually have to be a little bit stronger than this to do that with, so I'm just going to check here. And I have Queens on the button, kind of garbage, but I'm on the button, so I'm going to play it aggressively. As you'll see, I like to play very aggressively. In position and very passively for the most part out of position more tight aggressive not passive but more wait for very good hands and I'll play a lot looser on the button all right I fought the set of Queens I like to bet make my C bets a little bit less than the pot so I'm bet 36 into a $40 pot and I'm just check folding here no I have a king high flush draw but there's in Omaha it's just a bad play to draw to a flush that's less than the nuts or the low end of a straight or anything like that because even if you make your hand, there's a good chance that someone else ha will make the nuts. So unless you have, like, the only advantage of having a draw like that is if it, you have, like, a set or two pair with it. Then you can play it, play it and play it pretty strongly if you wish. But otherwise, pretty garbagey. So unfortunately, I got to fold to that bet over here. Um, pretty garbagey hand too. I'm just gonna fold this to a raise. I am in position, but really that hand's worthless unless I flop a seven. Flush draw is helpful, but I'm not likely to flop anything with it. And I'll see a flop for two dollars more here. Flop nothing but a gut shot. Well, two gut shots actually. Queen or an eight. But even a draw like this, it's just. If you're against a better draw, like if someone has King Queen Jack nine, although that's unlikely and it's kind of limp limp. Everybody playing so passively, but if so, it's a bad play to draw to my cards. Okay, so right now I have a pair, but I could be drawing dead to Queen Jack, dead to a split. I don't see any reason to put money in the pot there when I'm certainly behind. And reload the max. I 
Okay, so now Queen's on the button again. But the one thing to note is last time I, I had a suited queen, this time I have no suits, just rainbow. So now my hand's very weak, but I am on the button. I'm gonna call just just to pop a queen. If I was in earlier middle position I'd certainly just fold this hand. And you can make an argument that it's better to just fold it on the button anyway, but I think the queens give me enough to just limp in on the button. I'd certainly not call a raise. And that's an easy fold. Queens on a 10 10 7 board. If you're not familiar with Polymen Omaha, it's absolute garbage hand. So, betting a raise here, I would expect the raiser to ha probably have a full house. Could just be an ace 10, but it's very, very unlikely to be less than that. Could also be protecting sevens. And let's see. Yeah, he was protecting sevens. This guy with a 10 and 3 over cards. So he had lots of redraws there. Move seemed perfectly fine by both players. With the sevens, that would probably be a bad move to try to raise and get all in if they were deeper. But since he only had about a half stack, popping a full house there, I'd do the same thing. And the guy with the ace, king, queen, ten seemed justifiable to me. Even if, if he is against a full house, which there's a possibility of him just being up against a naked ace, ten and having being a nice little favorite. Alright, so raising got called jack eight five flop make my standard goal c bet sometimes i check behind on a flop like this where i have a chance of making something but with the two nines i have less of a chance of making something decent and he calls and checks back with that little stack i'm kind of even going to be committed to call a push if he did it so i don't want to bet here there's a possibility if he's on a drawing hand, my nines are good even. So if he does bet the river, I'd have to seriously consider it. And he bets full pot. So now think about what he can have here. There's a lot of wrap type hands like six, seven, nine, ten, nine, queen, stuff like that. Also plus jaws. Now if he has Four six that got there. If he has an ace four of spades to go with some kind of drawing hand that got there, but I think with him check calling the flop, I'm good enough here to call. So I'm gonna see it. And six seven nine. Just that kind of board where if he has a made hand on the flop, he's not likely to just check call. Because there's a flush draw out there, there's a couple of straight draws. He's a small stack, small enough that he could have easily check raised all in. But he didn't. So, net river comes, just blanks, none of his straights completed except for if he had 4 6, which is unlikely. It's a bottom end gut shot. Just, just a good chance of him having nothing. So now I'm going to bust out another play I've been using lately. Little tiny re raise. I'm trying to think of what the amount would be for this though. <laughs> Make it 36. Did I do this right? I know when I'm playing 2550. And they call with jacks here. King Jack suited. Now I flop top two pairs. It's a good flop pretty willing to go with it but anyway my logic here is I have position and by doing this with a wide range of hands he has no idea what I have so now I'm gonna bet close to the full pot but not exactly there it's my top two pair it's gonna fold here over pair is nothing and he re-raises top two the only concern is I have no draws you can even make an argument for checking it back but 
I'm just gonna raise all in. My top two figures would be good. Heart would probably be very bad. There it is. Um, nope, my hand's good. But he did have a good draw there. Top pair, in addition to a wrap, is King Jack. So you can catch an eight, two in the hand, an ace, king, jack, or nine. But I think after re-raising pre-flop, it's just hard to fold that hand. You can definitely make an argument for checking behind the flop and seeing a safe turn before playing the hand strongly, though. Because there are, like, a hand like that, I would think that he's a favorite over me there. There's a lot of cards you can catch to win the pot. Now, I have draws to a full house, too. Four outs to that. But, well, three outs because he had a queen. But he had a pretty decently powerful drawing hand there. Alright, ace 10, 10, 9. Got it limped. Eh, this isn't that strong of a hand. I'm just gonna check. Flop. Nothing really. I'm gonna test the waters though. Decent chance that. Oh. Alright, now I have the nuts. I wouldn't always bet out on a pop like that, but with me having a 9. Less likely for him to have a good hand. And now here's what I get myself into for betting a flop. Now an 8 comes on the river. Completes a straight draw they could easily have. So it's an easy check. I'm going to limp here with 10, 9, 9, 7. Pretty solid hand, but I'm in an early position. Don't want to play it too strongly. And he doesn't have it. Maybe some kind of 2 pair or just a flush draw they didn't feel like bluffing. Don't know. Yeah, kings. Very, very interesting. Just pocket kings with nothing. Alright. Um, short stack raises. Equity is probably not bad against him, but I'm just going to fold. I only have $4 invested. Alright, so I'm going to make my little re raise here again. I'm trying to think. Is 36 the amount I normally do it to? Yeah. So, again, the logic behind this is with 100 big blind stacks. He raises the three and a half times the big blind. I only make it nine instead of making a pot size re-raise. And the reason for this is because then if he has aces and comes over the top, the other time that leaves us less than a pot size bet. Less than a pot size bet on the flop, and he can just stick it in if he has aces and not worry about what I have. But now, re-raising this, re-raising the 36 instead of the pot size, which would be 42 or something. That makes the amount he can make it only to like 100, a little bit over that, 110 maybe, as opposed to like 140, and, or 130 or whatever, I'm not sure the exact amounts, but basically instead of leaving less than a pot size bet where you can easily just stick it in with aces, it leaves about pot size bet and a quarter or a half or so. And then he really has to think twice on some flops, and I just get less money in bad. And then if he's always potting the flop with aces, then I only get the extra money in when I'm ahead. So this is something I was recently reading. Uh, Wolf Slot Bloom, Blooms. Not sure if I pronounced that right, but his new book. Uh, it's called Secrets of Professional Pot Limit in Omaha. And while a lot of the stuff I've read so far is just short stack strategy, that's not very useful to me anyway. Maybe some would like to try it. it. Sounds like it could be profitable, but not the way I want to play. But one thing that I really did like is he was basically talking about trying to isolate heads up with position against the target player. That's like a weak player at the table that you want to play a lot of pots with. But what I've been experimenting with is just doing it against any player because heads up with position and a decent hand that they're not sure if you're holding. It's just a winning situation in Omaha. Position is so huge. So if you can get a hand heads up in position and then have the opponent pretty much clueless as to what you have, you're in good shape. And like take for example that last flop, seven 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 flop. I re raise pre flop and in Omaha, what do players always put you on when you re raise pre flop? Aces. So 
So I bet that when I bet that flop, I bet he's even folding hands like Jackson Queens just because he's afraid that I can easily have aces, which is true. I, I do the same raise with aces, but that time I, I didn't, and I'm easily able to take down the pot with king high. Alright, uh, this is kind of junky, but double suited. I think it's worth a raise and a cutoff. Again, in early position, I just dump it. My skin's getting short handed, so I could play some. I right, hear a flop top pair, but with no kind of draws at all. I'm just going to check behind this flop. I have a pair, but nothing. It seems like a board that he can hit pretty easily. Now I have two pair, but there's a flush out. I'm just going to try to play a small pot here. Not even going to value bet the river. That's real, that'd be really thin value bet in Omaha. Hopefully my two pair is good, and it is. So if I bet that flop, he most likely would have folded. But so can't bet every flop because other players are smarter than that to know that you're not going to hit every flop. And even in a heads-up pot, the other player is going to flop a decent hand, pretty decent amount of the time. Not always, but enough that if you just keep bet bet betting every flop, you're going to get check raised a lot. And then. Like with a hand like that, that has potential to improve, even though it's just a pair. I mean, I have a lot of cards that I can hit to improve my hand to two pair of trips, which could be good enough, good enough to win the pot. But I'm getting it moved off my hand, and I can get to see that card, that card a lot. And I have pretty decent aces here, with suited, and with a queen side card too. I'm gonna raise it, but it doesn't mean I'm automatically gonna follow through on the flop. And I'm automatically definitely gonna follow through on this flop because I flopped my set. But not always true. If the flop comes like 987 or something, I won't even think about making a bet at it. And I won't always raise with aces there, but it was a decent enough one to raise with, I think. Ace 10, Queen 8 with a suited ace. This is marginal. I'm just going to limp in this time. If the cards were a little more connected, like they're all one gap. I probably raised flop top pair, but nothing else. I'm just gonna check. All right, now I have top two. Definitely worth betting out now. My hand is best basically, unless anybody has ten ten. And take it down. And eh, it's double suited, but don't like the three much. I'm just gonna fold it. Four six nine seven in the cutoff with one suit, two gapper, good enough to raise. Get a couple collars here. One on the button, unfortunately. Here I have Kings with a suited ace and a suited six. Alright, so now yeah, it's pretty junky, and this player is almost all in. I'm just gonna dump it. If I was guaranteed that these guys would all just flat call, then it's a, definitely not a bad move to just call. But alright, so now pretty dry flop. It's gonna bet 28, a little standard bet. And he folds. And yeah, this guy was flat calling with aces, which is a good. Well, and on the button, I'd usually re raise, but definitely nothing wrong with flat calling. I have jacks with this su one suited jack until I min raise. For a bigger raise, I'd fold, but. And that's a really dry board. 
so I'm just gonna check. Now this guy comes out for hitting 23. I usually raise a little bit less than a pot. I'm gonna make it 80 here. And PIC moved it over the top, right? That's a strongly considered folding, which is very crazy with the second nuts, but. I'm basically representing kings, so combined with the fact that he'd probably at least a decent amount of the time bet out or probably fold preflop with hands that has sixes and threes in them. It's definitely not a snap call if he pushes pushes over the top, but I think I have to raise to protect my hand there, and I'm gonna get a lot of calls from draws as well, and king jack and the like too. gonna fold. Not much of a hand there. There we go, some action. Forward raise pot goes bet call. Well some action. No more from him. And this is probably a hand versus a draw and draw has to fold on the turn. Right, queen jack 10 8, no suited. If, it, if I had a suit, it'd probably raise, but. Queen jack 10 8, rainbow, which is slimping. Again, a two, but two gap hand here, double suited. Definitely worth raising the cutoff. Alright, um. No suits. And it's gonna fold. Close decision. I don't think either a fold or a call there is a horrible play. But if he has something like ace, king, queen, jack, then I'm not in very good shape. Ace, queen, jack, ten. See a pre flop here, pretty junky hand. I flop two pair, but it's not a very good two pair. Just gonna check, possibly even fold to a bet. I don't think calling a bet's a really good move here. All right, well everybody check through the flop. So my hand's best on the flop. So unless somebody has ace three, my hand figures to be good. So I'm gonna bet it out. And I take it down. Weak aces here, so nothing suited. Easy check, there's no reason to raise there. And I'm just gonna check through, didn't get any help on the flop. Alright, East King 6 5 on the button. The call. So, not a great hand, but I have a position. Alright, now re raise. Alright, we're decent hand here, ace, ten, seven, six, with the suited ace, and they call a raise. Now here, I don't know, this is a pretty junky hand to call a re-raise with. If one of them aces, I'm drawing pretty slim, so I'm just going to fold it. And I'm going to flop that straight. <laughs> With a hand like nine seven six five, I'd be happy to see a flop there, but I think my hand is a little just 
a little bit too junky for that. Not being result results oriented, I like my play. Now here, in a full house, I figure this would be the best hand. Almost has to be the best hand, basically. So, betting us out for value. There's no way you check the flop with Jack Ten or Jacks. So, I'm thinking he probably just has an old pair with a flush draw or something, and hopefully he calls me with it. And he does. See what he, exactly what he had. Check two and an raise pop and blinds. It is a little too junky. Almost played that hand. Alright, let's see. That last hand. I got called by Queens. Didn't have a f or no, Queen 10. Alright, yeah, yeah, so he had a 10. Pretty junky kicker. Trip tens is a queen kicker. It's basically he only beats a bluff, but since he has one of the tens, increases my chances of being bluffing. Basically a field call. Tough to say whether it's good or not. There's times when I definitely bluff in this spot. Sorry about that. Friend just wandered in. Back on track here. Go a couple more orbits. Jack nine seven six on the button. Good folded to me. Good enough for a raise. Caller from the small blind for two callers, and I flop a nothing but a crappy flush draw. Um, something I'd bet out anyway because I could rep ace ace pretty easily there, but I'm just gonna check back this time. And here I have a really nice hand queen jack 10 7 double suited. Seven is not a great card, but the rest of the hand is nice. All right, I got checked through twice here now. I've Straight draw, although I could be dead if I'm against King Jack, but I'm gonna try to take the pot down here. Flopped top pair with nothing else. So, this is an example of an excellent flop to just go like this. If I get check raise there, I have to fold, but a lot of the time my hand's either good or drawing very live to several outs. And uh, this guy pots the turn. I'm just gonna fold. There's a decent enough chance that he has an old repair or a five. A really daring move would be to try to re raise and rep represent a five, but it's kind of unbelievable since if I actually had a five, I don't know if I'd really raise. Not really something I'd ever do. And a big all-in pot here. Set of kings takes it down. I'm assuming some kind of a side flush draw with maybe a wrap of some sort. Some kind of straight draw. And he had yeah, a side flush draw plus queen jack. So not plus draw and I got shot straight draw again check two from the small blind I'm gonna bet that out pretty much 10 times out of 10 because 
very rarely do you get check called, although I do here. Um, turn didn't help anything. There's no way you can have a draw, so it probably is top bearer better. I'm just going to check it back. And it's going to check it down. He probably is like, he's queen or something. King, queen. Alright, turn trip jacks. Or trip nines, rather. Alright, this is a pretty decent hand. Gonna raise it from the small blind. Certainly f figures to be better than his hand on average. And I flop top pair only. Gonna bet out close to the size of the pot though. Quickly raises me up pretty solidly there. And I have to call this just the king got a flush draw, but it's a must call. Um uh, I don't really have any draws except the gutter ball. And wow, my pair of sixes are good here. <laughs> oh. So he's basically making move with nothing, with nothing in the pot. Interesting. And this table is now broken. Say that it makes it a good time to call my video after the blinds come up. Play the rest of this orbit at this table. So, but 704, I'm up about two blinds, although I did get in for that one big pot here with the top two, bare top two pair basically against top pair with a ton of redraws. Got a little bit lucky to win that one. But I have played some pretty solid poker and otherwise just chipped up slowly but surely. I'd like to think that this video did a good job of teaching some of the less experienced pot and Omaha players how to play. For the more experienced players, well, you probably have more experience than me, so I don't know how much I can help, but one, I do think that that small re-raise in position is one thing to note. It's been very effective when I've been using that. Just do it with a decently wide range of hands. It doesn't have to be a complete monster hand, like even the book in, or the example hand in Wolf's book that I saw was he had like Queen Jack 9-7 and pocket 10s would suit it all in pair but so it doesn't have to be anything huge as long be, as long as you're unpredictable and you have position position is so important in Potlum and Omaha almost more important than the cards alright if I second set here Pot size bet. I'm just gonna call it. Always a chance of being up against aces. And well, now that I saw a safe turn and that I have a flush draw. I'm not folding. And the only reason the flat call would be so this guy comes along with his draw, but I don't know if I really want that. I'm just gonna stick it in. Certainly a chance of him having an ace. Well, not now. He would have called a lot quicker than that. And he had just bare top two pair. That's really overplayed, really. And was I just in the big blind? And I'm just going to sit out. But. Alright, so that's a nice way to end the session there.
value betting his top two pair. That's kind of a scary board for it. And even if he did have aces, picking up the diamond draw is kind of key. And after that, heart, straight completing card in the river. I'm just happy to see the pot shift to me. Note that if I didn't raise the turn, this guy almost certainly would have just stayed in with his draw. And what any, every draw besides my diamond draw connected, basically. So it would have been bad news for me. So protecting your hand at some points is very important. If I had ace ace on that flop, pretty good chance I just jack up the flop to try to drive out all the draws. But with this with the tens, it's not that I don't have the best hand a lot, but that if I raise, I'm, I'm gonna drive out pretty much all the worst hands, except for big draws that are about even money against me. Alright, so I'm done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.